Okay, today's video, I'm going to show you how to time an engine on a 2010 Mazda 3 2.0. Uh, this is also, a, this is a Ford engine, but it's in a Mazda. Uh, it's a little bit different than any uh, other cars. Uh, there's no keyways uh, in the uh, crankshaft. I mean, I'm sorry, in yeah, the crankshaft pulley. Here, I'll show you the pulley. All right. There's no keyway there, so basically this just turns. Just if you, in other words, like without the bolt in it, it just turns. It doesn't do anything. And the same thing, even though you have your um, your your uh, your chain on, if you turn if you turn the cams, it's just gonna turn the cams. It's not gonna turn the crank. The crank pulley, the, the crank uh, chain pulley on the bottom is it turns too, so it's like all freewheeling until until it's locked down. So it's a little bit different to timing. You don't just line up marks on the timing chain with the, the sprocket and you're good to go. That's not how it is on this type of engine. So basically, let's say you're doing a head, or if you just want to learn how to do timing or make sure your timing is correct. Okay, I replaced the head on this car. No, yeah, not replaced it. I'm sorry, replaced the head gasket on this car, and I'm doing the timing now. Okay, the first thing you want to do once you get it back together is you—it's an interference engine, so make sure you don't just keep cranking things. In other words, if you keep cranking this and you hear it hitting something, you would have to put a bolt in the crankshaft and turn it a little bit to get, so it just free wheels. So you want to get this lined up. How to get it lined up? There's a couple of tools you need. There's this type, this tool, I'll show you. Let's see. see, it's this tool. It's just a, a square tool, right? It locks in. Let me show you on this side. Got a little wires in the way, but basically, you see how? See over here, there's a groove. See, and it just slides in here. And over here, over here, there's also another groove, and it slides right in, you see? It's on both sides here. Let me see over here. It's a better angle. You see here? It slides in, and it slides in over there. You see this? It slides in, and over there, it slides in. All right? And that means that these two cams are top dead center. Okay? And, and another way you can know, well, that you need that tool. But another way to know that you're not bottom, bottom dead center is that tool won't go in. It's basically, it's off-centered. So if it's bottom dead center and you try to slide it in, they're going to be too low. It won't go in. That's, that, that's the reason. Another, another thing you can check is your cam lobes right here. You see they're pointing up, 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 up means they're closed. Bolt cylinders are closed and piston is on top that center. I just put a screwdriver, just lightly put it in here, all right, to, sh to make sure it's at top that center and not bottom that center. Okay, now, once you have that, the cams, you're gonna have to get that tool. There's two tools you need. One tool is already in the, the cam, uh, already in the side of the block. It looks like this one, but it's not as long as this. It's a little shorter, but it's the same. it looks exactly the same, but it's a little shorter. This is for a different type of engine. All right, the one on me, it's already in the car. And it's a kind of a little bit of annoying because you gotta take the drive shaft out, but I'm gonna show you how to do it without taking it completely out, okay? So basically, uh, let's recap with the cams. You need that tool, or you can get a bar. I mean, you can try to get a bar, but I mean, this tool, I got it on Amazon. I, can, I put a link down. Uh, the tool came with those two little screw tools and this bar, I think it was 25 bucks. I mean, if you're gonna use it once, I mean, that's not really that bad. If you want to try to make a bar, you know, this thing, like I said, it doesn't have marks, so you got to be really precise with it. This is a pretty machined piece, all right? So that's in there. You know it slides in. It's bottoming against the cams, all right? And you can either verify because you can see your cam lobes pointing up, not pointing down like these. You see how these are up? This is the tip. And here, these are up open not completely straight up but they're open you can see you see up these are down so you want them 
number one cylinder up. This is number one cylinder, number one, number two, number three, number four. It's always number one cylinder in there, near the timing cover. Timing belt cover or timing chain cover. Okay, now let's go down and see how we do to uh, align the crank now. What you gotta do is you have to put a bolt in here and just snug it enough that it has good friction that it can turn the crank. Cause now once you turn this bolt, it's not, even though behind the cover, the, the gears are there for the timing chain, you know, the sprocket, even though when you turn this, nothing's gonna move with the crank, okay? Because it's gonna need, it's gonna need the back of the pulley to, you know, press against everything to turn everything. So like I said, everything is freewheeling. Now this bolt, this bolt comes out right in this area, right here. You see, that's the tool I showed you before, the longer one, but this is the correct one. It's the shorter one of the two. All right, you gotta screw it in. And the whole thing is you can get this out without moving this, without taking out the drive shaft, but you can't get the longer one, one in because it's longer than this. This is just a plug. It's longer than this. So it can't get in, it's gonna hit the uh, CV joint. So, so what you do is you take out, there's two bolts here, a 14 millimeter. There's one here, and then there's one on the top. You take them out, right? And then I'll show you what I did. You don't even, and then you turn, you turn the um, steering wheel to the right, passenger side, so it gives you a little bit more extension. All right, you gotta put a little pan because the little tranny fluid is gonna come out. All right, so see there, okay. So now, hey, I'll show you. You see there's pins. Let me take this off, maybe it's better. Yeah, okay, there's pins here. You don't have to take the, um, the mount off. Let me see, maybe it's a little bit better with this. You don't have to take this mount off. All right, you just these 14 millimeter bolts. There's one here that you know you get you get through the wheel well, and the one on top of that. Then you get a vice grip, right? And you put a vice grip pliers here, and then you hit it with a hammer a little bit enough to get it. You see how far out it is? It's not the, it's about an inch or so. Because what that's gonna do here, let me show you. You see? You see the tool right there? Now, it, see this little clearance that you have once, you, once, once the uh, drive shift comes out, you have enough clearance to, to put this, uh, the, the alignment tool in there. Okay, so basically, see, is everything separated? So when I take that tool out and I put this plug back in and tighten it, all I gotta do is just tap it and it'll go right back in. So you just get a little, um, a little pan to catch the tranny fluid. It's not that much. You know, and then you measure how much came out and you just put that right back in. Okay, so that's how that's how you move it out so you don't have to take the drive shaft off, you don't have to take the, the ball joints, you don't have to mess with any of the suspension. That's a good tip. Alright, and so then now and before that, alright, that's how and now you wanna be a little bit before top dead center. Okay, a little bit before top dead center, and then you screw in the um the alignment tool. That bit, that tool basically is gonna, when you turn the crank, it's gonna hit the balance, uh, one of the um, crankshaft, you know, the, the balance part of the crankshaft, it's gonna hit it. And that's that's gonna give you top dead center. You know, why they did that, I don't know. But it works, I mean, they have a lot of these engines out there. Anyhow, so I backed it off a little bit, and then I, you're gonna hear it, I believe. Watch. Hear that, boom. Let me do it again. And now when I'm turning this, nothing up top is turning. Where the bar is in the cams, nothing's turning. So you go until, okay, that's top dead center. You just take it. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna zip that bolt out, you know, with, a, with an impact, you know, because it's gonna move if you don't, if you don't use an impact. Now you're gonna take the bolt out, right? Now, how do you align the um, the crankshaft pulley, okay? Then you put the pulley in, and you're gonna slide it in, right, with, with everything in top dead center. And you see this mark, you're gonna put, you can get a six millimeter bolt like this, you're gonna screw it in here, why it's on the, why it's on the, um, here, let me show you. You're gonna put it, you're gonna put it, you're gonna put it back in here, and that screw is gonna go in this hole. 
okay? Then you're gonna lock it down and then you're gonna tighten this. You gotta tighten it 22, inch pound, uh, 22 pounds, then 75 pounds, and then another additional 90 pounds. Uh, the best way to do that is you can get the 75 pounds probably. Uh, you have to get a, an, either another special tool, but do not keep the tool in the camshaft or do not uh, in the camshaft. Just don't keep that tool there. It's not made for that. And don't keep pressure on this little tool either. That's soft aluminum. It's not made for that much pressure. Basically, there's a tool that holds the sprock, the, the uh, crank pulley, while you turn the bolt. So you're holding the crank pulley and you're turning the bolt. Basically, it's a tool that holds holds this, and then you take you take the uh, bolt and you tighten it why this is on there and once you get this down and once this is all tight and it has a crankshaft bolt uh, another thing you have to make sure is the cam the crank sensor I'm sorry the crank sensor see it's adjustable it moves the crank sensor I'll show it when it's all done the crank sensor goes right uh, this sorry about the light yeah these two bolts the crank sensor is gonna go like this all right, the crank pull is gonna be there. Crank sensor is gonna mount here to here, but it can slide up and down for adjustability. And what you wanna do is what you wanna do is once you have crankshaft sensor with the uh, crankshaft pulley, okay? Now, once you have your lock bolt, once you get top dead center, like I just showed you in the other video, all right, this bolt's gonna screw into the, um, the timing the timing housing, the timing case housing. It's gonna and it's gonna be locked in top dead center. Uh, you lock it up top, everything's gonna be top dead, dead, dead center if you follow the other video. And then what you wanna do is once you like that, you're gonna look at the teeth on the side. You see you have a space here, a blank space here, right? Then you look around and you look around and then you have another blank space here and a little blank space here. So you got two blank spaces here and one blank space here. Where you have the one blank space, which is basically on the left side, all right, you're going to count one, two, three, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, the fifth, the fifth um, tooth, all right, you have, this has to be precise. You're going to, you're going to mark it, and then you're going to have to put another black mark in the center of the fifth tooth, all right? Now, once you have that mark, you're gonna take it your your sense your sensor, which also had a mark here. It had it had a black raised thing. I just made it white and then I put a little dot. Now once you screw this into the car, this has to be exactly in the middle. Can't be on the top like that, or it can't be on the bottom of the tooth. It's gotta be in the middle. And once it's in the middle, and you, and your your uh, top dead center and that that little bolt, that little six millimeter bolt is in there. You're all set, you're all in top dead center. You screw it down and make sure it's in the center of the fifth tooth. And then you tighten these, these bolts down, and that's how you adjust the cam crank sensor on a 2010 Mazda 3 with a 2.0. And this video is basically how to, how to align the cam. Watch the other videos, how to align the cams and the crank and everything in top dead center. And then, how to do the crank sensor because a lot of people miss this out or oh, you know what they'll do they'll see where the marks were on the heads and then put the other one. well what happens if this one you know wasn't a hundred percent you know it'll give you a code it'll give you a hard starting or it won't run right but this is the best way to do it you put it right back to factory okay so now everything is lined up see we have the uh, bolt in here nice and tight I turned it, it hits hits against the um, the tool for the uh, top dead center for the crank. The bolts torque down. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna unscrew this. We're gonna verify top dead center. Okay, then we're gonna take this bolt, the tool I mean, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna take it all the way out because to get it out, it, it comes out. All you gotta do is just put, get a little pry bar and push a little bit and it comes right out. And then after that, you're gonna wanna put the plug, the factory plug back in. Don't forget to take this out. You see it's hanging out now? Okay. So just let it hang out. And now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate it. 
We're gonna rotate it. Two complete turns. Uh, oh wait, before I do that, I just wanted to tell you. Sorry, um, I took the cam, the cam tool out. You have to take that cam tool out, obviously. All right. So basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate it two complete revolutions to make sure everything is lined up. All right. So we go. Make sure nothing hits. Okay, you see the line? You see the little peg over there? See, that's one. You know, the little hole with a six millibolt, six millimeter. Do it one more time. Well, actually, one revolution. Basically, you turn the crank twice and the cam turns once, so that's what we wanted. I'm sorry, I don't mean two complete. Two complete t t revolutions would have been four crank turns at eight on the top. But all we're doing is one complete turn to make sure everything is fine. You, you wanna make sure you got no binding. You know, everything feels good. You wanna take the, keep the spark plugs out while you're doing this. Okay, so it's almost the top dead center. Right, and that was, I, I turned the crank twice. All right, now we put this this, this uh, tool back in. This is just to verify the marks after you tighten everything down. You put this hand tight, but just make sure it seats. Okay, it's nice and tight. And now, what you do, You get your uh, go slow. You'll hear it. Okay, you hit it. Okay, it's at its stop. You take it out. Now everything should go back. Um, everything should be aligned up. I mean, okay. So you take your little. I'm just using this kind. Of, it's a six millimeter bolt. Yeah, you just go like that, and that goes in. Look at that. That threads in. Don't have to thread it all the way in because I know it lines up. So we're good to go there top now and now we get our we look at the cams really fast and go and you see that they're at top I mean they're uh, up that means that they're closed and now we get this tool you see the two with two slits and you just slide it and make sure it slides in let me go on this side let me take my light off okay You see, slides in there and slides in there. Okay, so now that's the conclusion of how to time the 2.0 Ford Mazda motor. This happens to be a 2010. Okay, what's the annual code on this one? Not sure the engine code, but it's definitely a 2.0. All right, but it's a 2010 Mazda 3. And that's basically how you do it. All right, guys, thanks. This is Motor Car 2020. Uh, please subscribe. I got many videos coming in the future. All right, guys, thank you. Bye.